physical science time. We're going to talk about thermal energy. <clears throat> we're going to talk about thermal energy transfers, and I guess we're going to do it in brown. Thermal energy transfers. So this is the littlest G. There we go. Um, you you remember talking about energy transfers and transformations? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Remind yourself, or remind, show me that you remember by telling me what is an energy transfer and what is an energy transformation. First of all, what's an energy, let's do transformation first because it's the one we're not talking about. What's an energy transformation? Thermal energy turning into potential turns into kinetic. Good, that's an example, yeah. It's not always potential turning into kinetic, but when one kind of energy becomes another kind, we call that a transformation. So this, on the other hand, uh, not just thermal energy, but any kind of energy transfer is when what happens? It goes into a different object, right? And this is going to be really close to the microphone. This will be excellent. There we go. <laughs> It's none of your business. Okay, it's 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 just water. It's just stupid bubbly water that is fancy. Um, oh, so it's tonic water. No, yeah. now listen to me. Okay, so an energy transfer, an energy transfer is when energy, in this case thermal energy, transfers from one object to another. There's we're gonna talk about three different ways that this happens um, commonly. So you might have a list numbered one to three, but I'm going to start with number one, and I'm going to see how much room it takes up, and then I'm going to move on to number two afterward. If I were you, I would not go one, two, three, and then complain about how much room one took up. Let's just start with one. So um, let's do them in the same order as your book so it doesn't confuse you. The first one is called conduction. This was, I mean, they're all physical principles. They're all things that always happen, and so it's not really necessary to say that one is simpler than the other, but the easiest, I think, to understand is conduction. So conduction is just when, if we want to be real fancy, we could say when two objects interface, their thermal energy can flow from one to another. But let's just, it, ooh, maybe we should write that down, that sounds good. When two objects, can it be more than two objects? Yeah, it can. It can be more. We could say when two or more but we're just going to talk about two in general. When two objects interface, thermal energy can flow. In fact, it always does flow. Let's just erase that and write right? flows from one to another. First thing that I want to talk to you about, what is, when I say when two objects interface, what, what in, in layman's term, in hillbilly terms, what does two objects interfacing mean? Like touching. 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 Like touching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When two objects are touching, thermal energy flows from one to another. From which to which? From whatever thing is bigger to whatever thing is smaller, whatever thing is blacker to whatever thing is white? Yeah. From whatever thing is warmer to whatever thing is cooler, always. So like, when you go outside and like shovel your driveway and your hands are like freezing cold but your face stays warm, you go like this, mm. you get inside. Mm. She, you, viewer, can't see what she's doing, but she's touching her like that, right? Something like that. Yeah, so your hands are cold, your face is relatively warm, and you can feel, I mean, you're feeling both, so it doesn't really work, but, so think about it this way, yes, but think about it this way, if, if it's hot out, pretend it's the 4th of July, or even it's November now, but it's still hot out, and you go touch the sidewalk, right, it's going to feel warm, because the sidewalk is warmer and energy is transferring into you. Right? If you go outside in December, hopefully, if it ever gets cold, and you touch the sidewalk, it's going to feel cold because energy is transferring out of you, right? Because you're the warmer object in that case. Yeah, I do. Okay, so, so sorry, go ahead. Whenever you're doing that, is the, en is the energy transferring from your cheeks to your hands? Generally, yeah. Your hands are generally colder than your cheeks because your cheeks have a richer blood supply. That's not about what this class is about, but that's a good question. Um, so, uh, what is about this class is, or what this class is about, I should say, is on the microscopic, on the atomic level, what's going on with the particles here? Think. Tell me something. What's going on with the particles? When they're yeah, they're always moving. They're always moving. They're Which one is moving on average faster? The hottest. The hotter one. The warmer one is on average moving faster. And so when it touches the one that is moving more slowly, it, we can think of it as it's like encouraging. They're bumping into it. 
they're bumping into it. The warmer object's atoms are bumping into the cooler object's atom, causing them to move faster as well, which causes that to warm up, right? And it always flows in that way. What else does it do? When, it, when the warmer object's atoms touch the cooler object's atoms, not only does it speed the cooler object's atoms up, what else is the it? hotter. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So the, it's not that the warmer object always completely heats up the cool one. They reach a, what do we call it? Do you remember from the video? Yeah. It, mm, equilibrium. They reach equilibrium. Their temperature will level out eventually. Will they always attain the same temperature? Yeah, if they're, if they're touching long enough. It, they always will attain the same temperature. Anyway, that's conduction. When they're actually touching, when they're physically in contact, it's called conduction. The second type, you should write down please, is convection. Convection? Convection. Have you ever heard of a convection oven? Yes. Some of you if you're rich, you might have a convection oven, or you're not rich. You guys are super poor. If you're if your mommy's yes. rich, she might have a convection oven. Um, I'm not super poor. Is isn't it for the air to circulate? Yes. Okay. So in a convection oven, the air, right? It's tempting a lot of times when we think of examples for science that we think that things are empty. When it's like, like you might even say you're thinking about Thanksgiving and like, oh, the turkey comes out of the oven. The oven is now empty. You might think, but it really isn't, right? There's air inside the oven. And so what a convection oven does is it circulates the air. So we can think of it this, um, this is specifically the transfer of thermal energy due to moving what? Usually circulating what though? Moving air particles. Always air? It is always atoms, but that's too broad and air is too specific. What else can convection occur in? You remember, I know you water. learned this in, yeah, it can occur in water. It can occur, we talked about it a lot in, yeah, in, in Earth's mantle, right? Or it, specifically in the asthenosphere, it convects all the time, right? It's always moving in a circular cup. So in moving, due to moving what? Fluids. Yeah, good. Fluids. Um, and this is not usually the time of year that we talk about this, but let's just real quick draw another little Boy. separate, just give me a second. Fluids. Um, and we have, I, I know I said in one of my previous videos, um, was we talked about fluid friction. When the doctor says drink more fluids, he doesn't even mean delicious sparkling water. He means water. He means water, right? Um, in biology, we use the word fluids. It generally means just like water, water solutions. Um, but in, in physical science, fluids include what? Anything that flows. So, yeah. gases and liquids. liquids. We even sometimes consider some solids fluids. Like, you know... Um, Sand will flow. There's such a thing as, as a landslide or a mud flow, right? Those things are are largely solid, but they do still flow. Those can kind of be thought of as fluids too, depending on the circumstances. Yes. I was just pretty much going to ask the exact same question, except for with the tectonic plates, the top of it is still considered with going with the convection, but it's solid at the top. Yes. The the uh, so the crust is solid and. The lithospheric mantle is also solid. Yeah. The asthenospheric mantle is what convects, and then those solid parts, the lithosphere, yes, um, they yeah they kind of go along with the convection, but they themselves do not convect. Okay. So once again, just like conduction, how how is the transfer of energy? What specifically happened? Like what? Uh, I can't think of a question. Goodness, I'm just going to tell you. It still flows from warm to cool, right? It's just in this case, it also there's a fluid motion as well. Um, and you know, and we talked about this last year, and so this is, I know this is a review for you. Uh, if, we have, if we have a fluid, I'm going to use green because it's science fluid. So here's our puddle of science fluid inside of our science beaker. Stupid. Um, when, and our heat source generally, usually, even when we talk about like the mantle, is at the bottom. Even in your fancy rich lady convection oven, I'm, I'm just keep saying that because I'm jealous because I wish I had a convection oven, but um, even in the convection oven, the heat source is at the bottom. Um, in this science fluid, the heat source is at the bottom. When we think about the asthenosphere, the heat source is the core, which we can think of as the bottom. So in general, when particles here get hot because of the heat source, right? I don't know if this is a super good growing. The orange is supposed to be a heat source. Um, when they get hot because of the heat source, what do they do? It melts. Uh, it's already a fluid. Oh, it's already so a liquid. So it starts to melt. Yeah, so say what someone over here says something too. It doesn't dry away from a gas. We're not going to talk about that just yet. What? It convects. Yeah, it convects, but then you're getting ahead of yourself. Because what happens when, so when this is warm, the particles start to move. move faster. And not only move faster, but they also do what? Yes. 
Yes, nice but like they get faster. That's their increase in kinetic energy. And they do what that increases their potential energy? Go farther. They get further apart. So now the same amount of fluid is taking up more space. And so it's, so it's expanding. Yeah, it's expanding. It becomes less dense. And so the less dense fluid, because it's got hot, rises. This is not always true. Not always are warmer fluids less dense, but generally it is true. Um, so the warmer fluids become less dense and rise up. And up here, they're further from the heat source. So they do what? They fall. They, well, they first cool down, and that causes them to fall. And so we get this beautiful lava. circular pattern, just like the lava lamp. I used to have a lava lamp in here, but it broke. Um, there's a picture of a lava lamp in your book that says, the heat. Your book out. The heat. Well, I'm on page 165. The heat from the light at the bottom of the lamp causes one fluid to expand more than the other. The other. This creates convection currents in the lamp, right? Um, Anytime there's a heat source and a fluid, there's going to be some degree of convection. When you see a, roil a rolling boil, I almost always, almost accidentally say roiling bowl, but I mean when you have a rolling boil, when you're going to make your craft easy, Mac, right? Um, that's because of the convection. The, the fluid is warming and rising and then cooling and dropping. Yes? So something that is more dense than something if it heats up, can it be less dense than the other? Yep, 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 that happens quite a lot. Um, so, if any, I, we, backing up one step, you understand that things that are less dense will generally float yeah. in something that is more dense, right? Okay. Mmm, tasty and refreshing. <laughs> Three, radiation, let's just move on. I'm accidentally... I'm in a commercial for that. I'm accidentally using um, my rust-colored marker now, but whatever. So, radiation... Um, in both of these, we said this one, they are touching, right? In this one, are they touching? Well, yeah, they still are. It's just not, it's a fluid, so it has something more specific going on. But this is the one where they don't have to be touching. So radiation is, uh, we could say, we have all these, say, uh, how they transfer thermal energy. So we'll just say the transfer of thermal energy due to electromagnetic, and we'll talk more about these in the future, but electromagnetic waves. Um, so, so, so that's all that radiation really actually is. So, yeah, when we choose... That's why they're called radiation. The, the, yeah, you're right. The, now listen, I'm going to address both of those things in one second. Let, let me speak though. Um, when you hear radiation, probably, um, you're thinking about what's called nuclear radiation, right? Um, when we think about someone who has cancer having radiation therapy, or when we think about nuclear waste have emitting radiation, we generally think about nuclear radiation. That's not always the case. In fact, radiation, the, the thing of the universe, the entity in the universe that allows you to see me as much as you don't want to, is radiation. It's electromagnetic radiation, right? These, these LEDs are emitting electromagnetic radiation and it's bouncing off of my misshapen forehead and bouncing into your eyeballs which then your, your little nerve processing in your eyes allows you to see and perceive me right so radiation is all around us all kinds of light are radiation um, all kinds of light the specific kind that we're talking about here is what we call infrared radiation infrared radiation transfers thermal energy it's not the only one that does but it's what the one that does the most. Um, so when you think about an infrared camera that can record infrared radiation, all that's really doing is kind of phasing down the infrared light, or phasing up the infrared light so it becomes visible. And as you know, cool objects, have you ever seen an infrared camera? Cool yes. objects like, are darker. Yeah, cool objects appear black, warm objects appear or white, blue. and there's like a whole range. Blue. Yeah, so it goes black, purple, blue, green, uh, orange, red. yellow, black red. Um, what? No, black light's a different thing. That has the ultraviolet light. But the infrared uh, is just showing you the different temperatures of things because of how much infrared radiation they're emitting. Um, and so this kind of thermal energy transfer, this is the only one of these that can occur in completely empty space. These ones both require an object to be in contact with another object. This one can occur in completely empty space. All of the light and warmth that we get from the sun is through this process of radiation. Doesn't a black light have just show like Germany and stuff? Not always. A black light is just a light that emits uh, ultraviolet radiation. Some substances, what we call fluorescent substances, can
can absorb that ultraviolet radiation and then emit instead visible light. And so you see those as well in the dark kind of things. But like, why do your teeth glow? Um, they, they're, it probably is just bright. Like it's just, they're just glowing white. They're glowing with the other kinds of light that the black light is emitting. Some things really do glow. Like the, the mineral fluorite and like a scorpion's exoskeleton is kind of interesting. Tonic water, which this is not, but tonic water, all those things actually have the property of what's called fluorescence, where they take ultraviolet light and they lower the frequency by the way that their atoms are, and it changes to visible light. So they take in ultraviolet light and emit visible light. If you have like the glow in the dark, kind of that can light up there is a kind of mushroom that does that too. There's a there's also uh, uh, like those little glow in the dark stars. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those, but those things all they do is absorb visible light, and you, well, they absorb ultraviolet light and they emit visible light. So time out. Well, how okay. how does something that glows in the dark? How does that? Work? I just told you. Okay, no, no, let's no. move on. Let's move on. Like, how so, is it stored? It just takes in ultraviolet light, like I said, from the yeah. sun, usually, and then emits it over a longer period of time as visible light. So when you come inside, it'll eventually go out. Yeah. But that's just because it's run out of the energy that it got from the ultraviolet light. Let's you move on to these things. Um, so these are the three ways that energy, thermal energy can be transferred from one object to another. These are all of them always transferred from a warmer object to a cooler object. So um, if you think about like, if you're sitting next to a campfire, probably all of these are, are happening, right? Yeah. There, radiation is certainly probably happening the most because you're far away from the campfire and air is a really good insulator, but some of the air is warming up and moving due to convection. And also, if you're like near enough to the fire that you're touching the ground next to it and that's warm, it's probably because of conduction. Or certainly, if you grab the piece of wood or the metal poker in it and that burns you, that's definitely conduction. Um, this one they're touching, oh, this one's because of fluids this. moving, and this one is uh, through Electromagnetic. When you're Mr. Prime and you sit on this. Okay, so uh, let's talk about conductors and insulators real quick here. Sorry, I'm going to erase this board. So write down this next part, which is conductors and insulators. So we already know what conduction itself is, but there's a separate property that, that substances can have called conductivity. Um, and it's not only it's not only through the energy transfer that is called conduction that they work, but what we call thermo, uh, thermal conductors are things that really transfer thermal energy well. And by the way, through all this, what do we call the transfer of thermal energy? Say it again. It Someone said it. What's the transfer of thermal energy called? Heat. Um, so a thermal, ooh, this marker ain't good. A thermal conductor, uh, this is bad. Thermal conductor is a substance, we'll put, a substance, come on, marker, get it together. It's more it's, it just needs to be worked out a little bit. A substance, can you see that at all? Yeah, yeah it's all right. A thermal conductor is a substance that readily transfers thermal energy. What's a good example of a thermal conductor? Copper. Sure, any kind of metal, generally. Metals are usually good thermal conductors. They transfer thermal energy well. What, and these things are different. A conductor and specific heat are different things, but in general, do you think these have a high specific heat or a low specific heat? Now think about it before you just say it. High. So I knew this was gonna happen. Someone said one of each. What's the actual right answer then and why? Why? Exactly. So, so, so an object with a low specific heat is a better conductor because it takes less energy to change its, its thermal energy. Um, so these are generally, not always, but generally have a low specific heat. The opposite of this is something called a thermal insulator. And this one is one that, can you guess? Yeah, it holds heat in, but we'll, let's phrase it in the same way that we phrase this other one. A substance that doesn't, I'm going to put, readily transfer, transfer E, that's not right, transfer thermal energy. Like fiberglass. So, lots of times with a high specific heat, yeah, like fiberglass. So we use fiberglass wall insulation. Um, is it the fiberglass itself that has a 
High specific heat? No. What's the fiberglass do? What's so nice about the fiberglass? It's soft. It's it's soft, and what does that mean? It has H a lot of what? Air That's not what's nice about it. It has a lot of air inside of it. So it's not really, the fiberglass itself is not actually a very good insulator. It's the air, it's the air trapped in it. Why do we want to use fiberglass instead? Of, there's lots of things that trap air. Uh, cotton would be fine. Well, it, they used to use newspaper. Exactly. So the reason we use fiberglass nowadays for wall insulation is that those other things, most other things that trap air easily, like cotton, newspaper, uh, catch fire really easily too. And you don't want your house to burn down. I don't know if you've ever thought about it before, but you don't want your house to burn down. Um, and so then, generally, since the fiberglass is, is not flammable, oh. they use that uh, instead, but it still traps the air in, which oh. then traps the heat in because of thermal insulated wood. But what about that uh, old I insulation that uh, as soon as you like break down an old house... Who, who say it again? Who said it? Asbestos. Asbestos, yeah. It's still sometimes. It's not no, like produced it's anymore. It's still, it's still sometimes used. That causes cancer. And so when we don't want to use that. It's, actually, it's better at this, and it's less flammable than fiberglass is. Um, but cancer. So no. Okay. Why do people sometimes when they're building their house they put a hinge in their walls? Yeah, because it's the exact same reason. Because it's a it's a, that that itself is not a good thermal insulator, but it traps air, which is a good thermal insulator. Air has a very high specific heat, um, and so that makes it so that it's. Well, it's like house it's right. So they they better not. It'd be better off if they use fiberglass, but they. For whatever reason, you change it. So, how would fiberglass catch on fire whenever it's it technically glass? It, it just has a a lower resistance. You can pass the heat on more easily than the asbestos can, so it, it doesn't catch fire itself. It when I say less flammable, I mean it's worse at preventing fires than asbestos. So, what does it help us? Um, no, it just transfers the heat more easily. Okay, um, I, do you guys have other questions? I appreciate your questions. You have more about these. So remember, there are three ways that thermal energy can be transferred, and then these are, remember about conductors and insulators too. Do you have other questions?